Yes. Okay. So now, for the two last... <coughs> for the last two <coughs> conference of this workshop, first we will listen to uh, a talk entitled Biological Causation as Teleodynamical, Teleodynamics Physical Work by Jose Guillen Carvalho y Souza. Something like this. Thank you. Okay, uh, first of all, you can look at your mails that I have sent, well, they have sent a, a file with basic, basically what I want to see. Uh, okay, I can send it to you. So, uh, the purpose of my talk today is to present the teleodynamic as an emergent form of physical work that constitutes the proper causal regime of biological system. But, uh, behind the idea of a proper causal regime lies a specific notion of biological causation. And before we start talking about uh, the abstract log logic of this theory, I would like to address this notion of biological causation. So, when you talk about biology, biological causation, even before we talk about causation, we have to understand very well what, what biological means. And I think there is two points of view. We can talk about biological causation in a way that biological is an adjective that really determines the causation, or we can talk about causation in the context of biological systems. In this sense, I think that, like we go, you go, we going to see, biological become a superfluous uh, notion. So, causation in the context of biological systems. For me, biological have, has here a metaphorical meaning. There is a set of beings that are referred to be as biological, and only in this sense, their causation receive, receive the same adjective. For example, when you talk about an American player, or a German player, or a Spanish player, the adjective that determines players don't really uh, don't really talk about different kinds of players, but the players in a context of countries. In contrast, we can also talk about biological in what I would call an ontological ontologically strong way as a determination of causation itself. In this sense, uh, we assume that there is a kind of causation that is specifically biological and fundamentally distinct from other forms of causation. Uh, when you talk about soccer player or basketball player or, or volleyball player, the, these ad adjectives really are determining a different type or a different form of play again. Well, in this, in this sense, biological, biological causation as a source of causal dynamics that differ fundamentally from, from other manifestations of causation in nature. But sure, we have a, pro a problem that is the causally closed universe. When you talk about new forms of causation, especially new form of causation that's in a specific time of the universe, wasn't there, weren't there, so we have a hard, hard choice to, to make. We can see that there is biological causation prior to biological systems, which is a little weird. Well, we, can, we could talk about biological laws, but anyway, 
or there isn't biological causation as a, as a, as a distinctive new form of causation. This is a problem, well, when you talk about biological causation as a specific kind of causation, there is a lot of other problems, but this one I used to illustrate the, the talk. So, the possible solution that we can try is think in biological causation as an emerging way of physical work. We talk about causation as physical work production. And we talk about biological as an emerging way of physical work. And there is the problem for this to work. Um, we have to rethink what is physical work and we have to talk about physical work as a constrained release of energy and we have to rethink what is emer emergence. Why? Because um, the problem with emergence uh, is that if you stay in a, in a meteorological context, in a meteorological framework, the critics of authors like him, in my opinion, are totally devastating for the notion of emer em emergence. But there is a way to think about emergence, not like something uh, more in a system or something more in a, in a dynamic, but as something less. Both uh, very hard ways of thinking. They are a little counterintuitive, but it's possible to, to understand with goals. So, are you basically are you basically try to present a generic theory of work and the emergence as something less? What's the problem? Both theories we can find in Deacon's book, In Complete Nature, that we have, uh, that uh, Victor have talked earlier. And it's a really huge book. It's a really huge argument. So, what, a, what I pretend to do? Just take the abstract logic within the, the argument of Deacon and see how that can work. Why? Because usually the, the most critics that Deacon have rece received aren't about uh, his biochemical proposal, but about the logic within this biochemical proposal. So, physical work as containing the release of energy, the idea come from Atkins and Kaufman utilizes Atkins in Schrodinger to make what you can call an autonomous agent that is capable to do a work cycle. What is this? For Schrodinger, the, 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 the special the special and enigmatic feature of life is the capacity to avoid the rapid decay in the inert state of thermodynamic equilibrium. All things that we know tend to the thermodynamic equilibrium and life in some way can avoid that. Um, Schrod Schrodinger talk about a uh, a negative entropy or a negentropy, there is some, some terminology word, but what Kaufman come to say is um, the way to avoid the tendency of the second law of thermodynamic is making, an, is making a work cycle. There is a citation for investigations a book from Kaufman, I don't read that, but there is a scheme where we can take 
where you can see how a system could uh, eventually uh, eventually run from the second law of thermodynamic. First, we have constraints that are required to produce physical work. And at the same time that physical work is produced, the, these constraints are wasted. Then, we know that physical work is itself able to produce new, new constraints. Then, these additional constraints may be used to generate more physical work, which in turn could generate more constraints. If the work perform, per, performed can regenerate the same set of constraints that make that work available, then we have a work cycle. From Kaufman, Deacon start to think about work cycles and start to think about uh, how can we understand work. So, from Deacon's proposal, the first point to underline is his conceptualization of energy. That is to say, as a relationship between difference <laughs> or asymmetries in the physical proper properties of concrete substrates. What that mean? Deacon talk about energy not like a thing in systems, but as difference between the system, the systems, and between the particles of the systems. In this view, energetic chains are redistributions of these properties. For example, heat chains can be understood as redistribution. Redistribu in asymmetries between vibrational intensity of particles that constitute bots with different temperatures. So we have two bots, when they change uh, heat, actually there is a, bot, a body with particles with uh, specific vibrational intensity, another body with other vibrational intensity, different and when they come together, they start to vibrate equally or in the same way. So, physical work can be so described as a constrained propagation of difference, since difference is uh, energy is difference, in a way that wherever we have a transmission of difference, there will be work or at least something analogous to it involved. What is this something analogous to it? There is a large problem in, in physics about we about with particles particles of a system can or cannot do work, but it's not for now. Uh, so physical work happens when the propagation of differences are constrained, like the typical explosion gas, that's when it's constrained explosion can move a piston. Uh, the second step from the theory of work is the relation between global level and microscope level. When you talk about an uh, equilibrium thermodynamic system, we have three features. There is uh, an spontaneous tendency of absence of asymmetries. Uh, a system in equilibrium is all the same in all its parts. A system in equilibrium is totally, un is totally unconstrained and, and have no work potential because there is no difference to be propagated. But, if you look at the same system, at the microscopic level, we see that there is a continuous <coughs> interaction between particles, in a way that they are mutually constrained themselves. So, um, so, in this continuous interaction between particles, each particle, under, each particle undergoes change in its properties that would not happen if they did not interact. In this sense, the, 
the propagation of difference between particles within the same system. There is a constantly mutual constraint where the states of particles are all the time non-spontaneous states. I mean, a particle in a system is being constrained in its possibility states. And the tendency is that uh, the, constra the mutual constraint prevents a multiple of a multiples prevent the constraint the constraint interactions uh, give a rise to a prevention of multiple possible states that impose a narrow spectrum of states in which particles become totally undifferentiated. That means that the spontaneous tendency of second thermodynamical law is equal to the outcome of a probabilistic tendency of particles interactions. There is not an inner force within systems that oblige them to become in equilibrium. There is a relation between particles that, by, const by mutual constraints, excludes a very large number of possible states, and this imposes a spectrum of equally par particles. So, we have a, a spontaneous, unconstrained system in, at global level that arises from a non-spontaneous state of constricted particles at the lower level. Then we can make uh, some, kind, some kind of scheme. In, no, in lower level L of system S, there is a spontaneous tendency of component A plus spontaneous tendency of component B or C or D that's constrained in cells. This makes a non-spontaneous state in A, a non-spontaneous state in B, in C, in D, in all these particles. And then in upper level U of the same system S, the non-spontaneous states of all the particles uh, make it possible a new spontaneous tendency of S like, like a global system. This logic is important because what you see is that non-spontaneous interactions make uh, give a rise to spontaneous tendencies. Then we talk about emergence I something less, which I think is the, <coughs> the, the most difficult part of this, this theory. There is a, a, long, a long discussion about emergence. Uh, I will go, I, will, I won't enter in that now. Uh, But I, despite this concept rich history, emergence, I will skip right to the organizational perspe perspective I want to take. So, Deacon used uh, Mark Bickhardt's process philosophy and understand emergence from the conceptions of process and organizations. So, what does it mean? What does it mean that Deacon with Big Hat and other authors, they escape from the meteorological uh, framework. When they talk about systems, they don't talk about a whole with parts. They talk about process and organizations. So, every process <coughs> uh, in Big Hat has and is defined by an, by an organization. A process in lower, in lower dynamical level may give a rise to regularities only recognizable at a higher dynamical level. Then we can talk about a casual scale of influence. Casual influence of upper level regularities, since the, the, casual, the, the, the causal powers of a process 
it's not the process itself, but its organization. Uh, any regularity in a level, once it's organized, have a, has a causal power that's founded not in the process itself, but in the way that the process is organized. It means that there is a causal influence in upper level that's neither deduced nor reduced to that of the preceding one, without being totally independent of, we, of, of it. So, what I'm saying? Particles or process in lower level, they can mutually constrain themselves and give a rise to a specific spectrum of organization. That give a rise to some regularities that's only regularities in the upper level. These regularities, not the relation, not the causal relation between particles, but the regularities that's, uh, that's emerged from from the mutual constraint interaction are the new causal source, are the new source of causal power. So there is not that the particle cause in the whole that cause something. No, no. The particle together are are, are organized to to make some kind of regularity. And this regularity when it's organized, can be the source of new causal power. But in what sense we talk about less and not about more causal power or something more in the system? So, organization and regularities can be understood as outcomes of constraints on the process. Sometimes we think about the organization as something that is imposed on a process. But if we think in terms of constraints, it's interesting because if a process has uh, multiple possible pathways to go and something starts to constrain, constrain these pathways, what when See, see, if something starts to constrain the pathways of processes, of process uh, development, what, you, what is left is the emergence of uh, directionality in the process. In this sense, the emergence of regularity or the emergence of new organizations are not the outcome of something that comes out of the process. But the way that the process constrains themselves, actually, emergence is less possibilities and not something more. What I think that even for a reductionist perspective, this could be a little, even for a reductionist perspective, this idea looks like a little more plausible. I mean, usually the problem with reductionism and emergence is that always looks like something external from the system just appear and with constraints as organization as constraints, we don't have to talk about something out of the system, but only about pathways excluded that give a rise to directionality. In this sense, work production equal to organized or constrained <coughs> release of energy and new forms of causation are the outcomes of a new set of constraints that is something less. In this sense, biological causation isn't a additional causation to physical causation, but it is physical causation that is more and more and more constraint and give a rise to a special kind of causation. 
So we have again a general scheme that two spontaneous states of a system converge in one dynamical level. Non spontaneous states give rise to a new spontaneous states at the upper level, and the new set of constraints make place to a new kind of causation. With this, we have Deacon's uh, dynamical dips. Basically, we have a homodynamical work uh, that is that is described as the thermodynamic seat in general, and the spontaneous tendency is constraint elimination. Then we have morphodynamical morphodynamics that are self-organizing systems and dissipative systems, <coughs> and there is no simple constraint elimination, but constraint propagation. And finally, we have teleodi teleodynamic systems that is what I think is a organic system. And in this case, there is no constraint elimination, there is no constraint, there is not only constraint propagation, but there is constraint preservation. I will jump that. These are examples of morphodynamical systems. They can believe that we just we can we only can understand the biological causation with use some kinds of physical causa causation or thermodynamical causation of uh, max entropy production production to like a like a bridge, but I will jump that and I go to teleodynamics. That is what Deacon believed to be causal. Uh, biological causation. So, uh, there is something that, that Deacon calls Hatchet effect, where two different morphodynamic processes start to impose constraints on one another in their capacity of energy dispersion. So, dissipative systems usually, to, usually <coughs> are usually self undermining, have self undermining mechanisms. There is the emergence of a local, a local decrease in entropy, but the system, like a whole, is going fast to, to equilibrium state. If two morphodynamical systems can realize work one on another to avoid or to constrain this self-undermining mechanism, there is a synergy between uh, the two morphodynamical systems that give a rise to a theologic, the teleodynamical systems. There is an autogen that is basically the, the biochemical model. There is um, two morphodynamical uh, systems, an autocatalysis and a self-assembly. There is, well, I use pass by that. And why we use the, the terminology teleo? So, in a teleodynamic system, the process is organized or constrained in relation to factors other than its raw materials or energetic constituents. The, restric the restricted integrity of the individual as a whole starts to work as a legitimate a le legit beneficiary, beneficiary to uh, occurrences. The, the, but the, the, beneficiary, the beneficiary is not a thing, but a dynamic form, the same teleodynamics. Each morphodynamic process serves now as both end and means in a Kantian terminology to one another, and there are and they are there for the benefit of the individual autogen. We can claim that teleodynamics is a goal direct is go is go direct toward its own continuity. We have a system that the way that the system constrains uh, itself, they are direct directed to continue to exist. Why is biological? To end this first, because of some aspects of the system itself. First, there is greater independence and autonomy from external constraints. There is a great complexity and a significantly better utilization of available constraints that support new and varied forms of activities. 
And then, with this kind of systems, we have activities that traditional uh, have been called vital activities, like self-movement, feeding, reprodu reproduction, and all that is founded on the constraint of the dissipative process. In the end, Deacon believed that a final cause, a naturalized final cause, is, is the constitu is the constitu cause that enables biological self to emerge for the first time in nature and generate a teleodynamic work with this individual as the beneficiary. Then there is some conclusions. But with once we decompute uh, a end like uh, there is an end for the system, he can talk about function va value in representation. And for finish, just for advantage of Deacon's theory. First of all, the way that emergence is described, um, it does not use emergence as a label of irreducibi irreducibility, but rather as a physical transition in which global causal dynamics are reorganized. Re re it accepts the real existence of theological phenomena without affirming that they have always existed. That is, it foresees their emergence from a non theological antecedent. Three, rather than the origin, the origin of life from a particular or, or concrete system, uh, they talk about a general description, description that, are, that is applicable to any potential primitive systems. And four, Deacons avoid unusual and enigmatic forces like uh, Elan Vital or the strange, in, the strange in quantum forces or other forces that are usually used uh, to explain these systems. Thank you for this. <laughs> Question, comments? Um, thank you very much. I am still a bit puzzled as to why you want to characterize emergence as something less. And maybe it's just because I'm really holding on to, I, because by definition it's something more, right? I understand that what you want to do is say that sort of biological cases of emergence um, come from a limited subset of the possible like, internal constraints in organization. But, is it, but I don't know if that's the same as saying that emergence is something less. It is certainly a subset of the cases that do emerge from the physical level. But the emergence phenomenon itself is something more. What? The emergence phenomenon is something more. Yes. There is a trick in the com proposal, and it's basically uh, when he talk about something less. Well, he don't say that, but if you read how he describes something less, he talk about what in classical metaphysics is uh, um, potential. Passive pot potency. So, in classical metaphysics, we have, for example, that the passive potency of a beam in prior states are possible, uh, are, are possibilities for a lot of formal causes. And when it receives a specific formal cause, he lost uh, he lost potential passivity, but gain gain potential activity. So there is uh, I think that Deacon don't have the don't has this distinction in mind. Deacon is not a philosopher. All his life he he investigates about the, the brain the brain and now he's talk about semiotics and 
he's a little sloop in, in his philosoph in his philosophical concepts. But when he talk about something less, I I would have to ask him, but I think that he's only talk about uh, something less as a uh, directionality in causality. So the emergence of causal actions as are something less if understood as physical work, because that's true. Uh, physical work in general are less constrained than physical work in morphodynamical systems, or in dissipative systems. So in dissipative systems, there, more, there, there are more constraints, and in biological systems, there are even more constraints. So, is something less. We could say that there is something less only, only in the thermodynamical, thermodynamical constraints of the, the work. The system is less or more, but obvious looks like it's more. But the way that it produces work is more constrained what means that is is less uh, unconstrained. It, 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 there is less possibility of work. I think it was very, very Kushpiko, you hear me? Yeah. Uh, very Kushpiko's uh, explanation of uh, and rendering of uh, Terry Deacon's uh, first part of Terry Deacon in Complete the, Nature. The first part. Uh, um, so what I was wondering if what what your project is, um, because what, what what you presented in a very articulated way is uh, Essentially, Deacon's account. I was what we're wondering if how this fits in your own project, and whether you are considered or planning to because there's a whole recent tradition of thinking about constraints and the idea of emergence as uh, well something less. The fact that you constrain the system in a certain way, and that goes back to Kaufman, and, uh, and more recently um, there's, there's a Important paper by Matthew Moster and Maya Monterio from 2015 on the Journal of Theoretical Biology. So I was just wondering how you position yourself with, with respect to Deacon and to the more general context of people that are claiming this, that are defending this kind of claim. So I presented two ideas of Deacon it's uh, his general theory of work and the emergence as something less. We, feel we really want to talk about not only the first part, well, I would say that is the second part, because before this we have the, the big problem that is absence causation. Because the con it starts with absence causation, then come to that, then come to how understand uh, <coughs> the teledynamics uh, development. So, what happened with me and Deacon is that uh, destiny. Is that sorry? Des destiny. I started to work on that because uh, my, my test ori orientator, or, well, no, my, uh, the professor who helped me with the thesis, is a friend of Deacon. And then we started to. Thesis. Yeah. And then we see we saw that uh, the big problem of Deacon isn't his biochemical uh, description, but the philosophical way that he puts this biochemical. For example, when talk about absential causations, he utilizes some some theories about yin and yang that. Um, metaphysically isn't enough so the project 
right now is to try to give to people a speculative or a metaphysical base. Basically is a pra practical metaphysics. It's trying to make a metaphysical model that can support not his philosophy because he has not philosophy but his biochemical approach. Marcel, a very short question. Yeah, it's very short and it's purely terminological and it's, it's not really addressed at you, I guess it's more addressed uh, at Deacon. Uh, it seems to me that he has completely changed the meaning of what physical work is. And I would just wonder terminologically whether that's wise, whether to, to take an extremely well-established concept from physics and use the same word with a different meaning in, in a scientific concept context. I, I find this an unwise strategy. If he's changing, if he's introducing a new concept and it seems to be, have nothing to do with the physical concept of work, what he's talking about, then he should use a new word for it. That's, that's what, all. What, what concept? The concept of physical work. But what is, in, is, introdu what is introduced? Um, the, the, the way you introduced the notions of energy and work has nothing to do with their physical definitions. Well, uh, it seems to, at least I don't see the connection. In Atkins, there is the there is a, an account of physical work as energy constraint, and then I the. And but, then but sorry to interrupt you. This has nothing to do with physics. Hmm? It, it, it's the term physical is, is extremely misleading here. It's in this tradition, yeah. you know, Kaufman and uh, the Santa Fe Institute, but yeah. they, they changed the, the meaning of basic physics word. We can discuss Matteo Mosio also in their fields. And it's true that maybe they should have changed. Yeah, that's, all, that's all I'm saying. But that's, that's not your fault, you know. That, you know no, no, of course not. No, no, but no, it's not a criticism of you. It's, it's a criticism of this line of, of, of research. It's the Schrödinger. And, for example, if I want to compare this line with another line, where I can, where could I, where I can, I could find the... Take any physics textbook. <laughs> Yeah, but it won't, it won't help you because what is important for you, for you it's that kind of a circular system of constraint that is not in standard physics. It's in all these auto organization traditions, Santa Fe, and, uh, and it's not in standard physics. It's, but it's inspired by Schrodinger and Kaufman was important for that. No, if, you, if you want a contrast that will be interesting for you, don't go to ordinary physics, because ordinary physics has nothing to say about biology. Goes to Prigogin. Yeah. So all these theory presume of certain idea of equilibrium and or the biological system tend very towards equilibrium. And the idea of Prigogin is that maybe their systems are never at equilibrium and they are interesting systems. But the mathematics of Prigogin is even worse than what you study that. Really, really difficult, and I don't know how it works in biology. But that—it's not—it's not, it's not a, a, a crazy idea that biological systems are never equilibrium. They don't even tend towards equilibrium. Maybe I don't know. You mean thermodynamic equilibrium? Yeah, they are just they could be different kinds. Very, of very unstable system that managed to. <laughs> Function for a long time completely outside the curve. Which more Prigogin? And it's a Belgian guy, so. <laughs> <laughs> Let's thank our speaker.